I wanted to create a few comments about using Cloudinary that uh, might save some people some headaches. As as we began to create more and more rich pictures in Insight Maker, once we had enough of them created, it seemed as though sooner sooner or later one of them turned you know, we would access it and someone would have changed the image that we had pointed to so that we had to go find another image and fix the rich picture and after a while it just got to be terribly terribly annoying so we went and looked for some utility that would help us avoid this in the future and what we found was this online thing called cloudinary which is a an image management facility probably more developed for software developers than the way that we're using it though it seemed to fit extremely well so that that what happens is that you store your images in a media library and then you can either right click on them and use the image the url for that thumbnail or you can open that image and use this url for the source picture itself and the nice thing about cloudinary is that there are a whole ton of transformations that you can do on images if you need to you can resize them and scale them and rotate them and 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 um crop them and do all and change from from pings to jpegs and lots of those kinds of things if if you need to but the the basic use of it you might think of it as there are three ways to get images into cloudinary you can have an image on your desktop someplace that you want to get into cloudinary you can have it on your clipboard that you want to get it into Cloudinary, or you have a URL for it someplace on the web and you want to get it into Cloudinary. You, this is the, the default interface and you can drag and drop a file here or you can um, click and select and go to your desktop and find a file that you want to load. And, and this, is, this is one that's on my desktop. Now notice when it brings it in, it takes the first part of your file name and then adds this default uh, label to it to, ma to make sure that it's unique. Once, once you load it, you can select it. You can go over here and you can rename this image to whatever you want to. Just be sure that you give it something that's unique for all of your images and don't rename it after you use it someplace because then the link will be broken, but you can rename it to anything you want to before you use it. You can also add tags to it so that they're easier to find in the future, and you can add multiple tags, and you can add metadata if depending upon what you're going to use it for. So you, can, I said, you can select a file, you can drag and drop the file, and if you happen to have an image on your clipboard, if I just copy this image, I can just go ahead and, and just do a control V and paste this in here. The thing is, it creates two images that are not the same. And I often do the control V to paste them in there just because it's convenient. I just then select it and, and delete one of them and then rename the other one whatever I want it to be. Now, because we've actually created hundreds of images trying to remember what's unique is enough to drive anybody insane so we just started at 0001 and, and started sequencing our images and if you go to this more upload options this is where if you have the URL for an image that you found someplace on the web you can paste that in here you can specify the ID that you actually want this image to have, like my cloud. And you can specify the tags, cloud, blue, sky. So that when I click on upload, uh, you can also select here, if you don't provide the URL, you can select the file and upload it from your desktop 
and specify the public ID in the tags, or you can paste it in here from the clipboard. But if you have the URL and tell it to upload, it will upload it, give it that name, and if you go and look at it, you'll notice that it does have those tags associated with it, and you can still add additional tags, you can rename it, or you can delete the tags if they're not appropriate. So I think that's probably the 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 shortest concise approach to using Cloudinary. And as I said, once you've finally loaded this image and you want to use it in Insight Maker, you can do a right click and copy this URL if you just want the thumbnail, which is usually part of what we also wanted was lots of the images were huge and after we put two dozen images in a rich picture it got very slow for it to load and pull all of these images from all over the web and some of them were very large so using the thumbnail itself was convenient because it's it's not very large so then I paste this in here and notice it says it's a reference to Cloudinary in my account and it's the thumbnail and I tell it okay and there's the cloud or I could actually open this and then use this URL and copy this link and then go back here and use that link which which gives the same picture because because Insight Maker scales it to the size that you've made the picture anyway. So, um, and if you, if you, I mean, in terms of initially playing around it to get comfortable with it, don't, I mean, don't worry about it. You can create images and delete them. So just go through the motions uh, a few dozen times and it should become relatively comfortable. And if you have any questions, um, let me know. There's, uh, there's all of the documentation is. I mean, it's see, it's built to to work with all of these different uh, programming environments. None of which we have any use for. But for just managing our images, it it works wonderful. And the the latest version of it, which is about a month or so old, also manages files so that you can use it to store documents as well as images. So it tends to treat PDF files like images as opposed to files. So that's a different wicket. So hope this helps. Bye.